Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 3, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6th of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay, so we've spent a bit of time defining accidental sin versus intentional sin because now we want to talk about it in relation to our personal processes of forgiveness and repentance and how the issues of accidental sin and intentional sin how that impacts on us, if it impacts on us at all. Mm. So we'll, mm. we'll talk about that now, hey? Mm. So first let's look at intentional sin is harder to forgive. Why is it that intentional sin, so when somebody intentionally harms us, that's harder to forgive than an accidental sin? Well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of reasons, but let, let's first start with the fact that somebody who's intending to hurt us can only really hurt us emotionally if we are open to being hurt emotionally in the first place. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some prior existing point of worth or some prior existing hurt that the sin that the other person is committing resonates with for us to feel more hurt mm -hmm. um, from what they have done. And the converse is also true. If we had no resonance of anything that was prior, somebody could intend to hurt us, but we would feel no hurt from it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the first thing we need to understand. To yeah. But the reason why it's often harder to forgive an intentional sin is because the intention of the individual is to harm us. And if, we're, if, if we feel about the intention of the individual or we care about the intention of the individual, mm. then it's highly likely we're going to feel particularly hurt by the fact that their intention is to hurt us. Mm. Whereas if we didn't worry about, if we weren't worried about the intention of the individual, then we probably wouldn't feel anything at all about it. Yeah. It just depends upon what we feel initially before they hurt us. Yes. As to how it feels internally. Yeah. But it's often harder to forgive because of, because we, because our, you know, on the planet, on the earth today, there are so many issues with personal worth. You know, we have a lot of what I'd classify as worth-based issues, where we've been attacked in the past or abused in the past or condescended to in the past. And, and we haven't let go. We haven't forgiven mm -hmm. any of these sins. And so we've got a build-up of emotion inside of us already now that whenever anybody seems to even have an attention to harm us, we, we, we react very, you know, sometimes violently even, but, or, but generally react very sadly to it. Mm. And, and, and that's the reason why an intentional sin is harder to forgive, because we've, we've often got a build-up of prior emotion we have not forgiven, mm -hmm. and then their new it, sin, which was designed to harm us, actually did harm us. Mm. Like it did harm us. There was something that happened that caused damage to us in some way, pain or suffering to us in some way. So it did harm us. And then because of the resonance with all of the other events that have already harmed us that we didn't feel about in the past, it's now just a huge build up of these particular things that we've refused to forgive and many of which we, we, we don't recognize as intentional, but actually were as well, mm -hmm. these old ones. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got this build up of terrible, a terrible amount of emotion to feel about the fact that people seem to want to harm us. Mm -hmm. and. And we, we are worried that perhaps it's because of something we've done. Something specific to us. Mm. So it feels far more personal yes. than if it was accidental. It feels like there's an intention to harm us personally, mm -hmm. and which may be the case. Mm -hmm. But, but, but there's because of there being something wrong with us, you know, some, something intrinsically bad or wrong with us. And, and that's when we start to feel a lot of hurt about mm -hmm. people who have intentionally sinned against us. And then, of course, because of that intentional hurt that is built up over years and years and years of our life that we have not forgiven in the past, mm. 
it's very, very hard to forgive the next one. Mm. Very because, hard. Because why? Because to forgive one is going to lead us to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. Mm -hmm. And if we've got to build up of a hundred of those events over our life that we've never released, just forgiving one is going to open this Pandora's box of all the others. <laughs> And so it's sort of like, no, there's so much now resistance to us opening that so-called Pandora's box of all the other sins that we haven't forgiven. Yeah. We now attribute this new sin to be the most severe problem of all, yeah. rather than seeing it as, no, it's a build up of problems that have occurred over a lifetime. Mm. Mm. So uh, just on that point then, because this question is about intentional versus unintentional sin, and mm -hmm. I know you've spoken about the worth issues involved. Um, what if it's the first, because we have to forgive even the first time we're intentionally hurt. You talked about the build up there. Yes, we do. But what about if, if a parent or a caregiver or someone in my life, a sibling, when I'm small, I haven't been hurt in this way before, Mm -hmm. and someone intentionally harms me as opposed to unintentionally harms me, is it true that it's harder f to forgive the intentional harm than, and is that just because there's more harm involved? In no, no, there's harm? other reasons too. And okay. one of the reasons, particularly for children, mm -hmm. are the fact that if, the, if intentional harm is perpetrated towards a child, the adult usually also has an intention to stop their, the, 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 result, response. the response to that harm. Yes. So, so not only does the adult harm the child, mm -hmm. but they also stop the release of the harm from the child. So now yeah. every intentional harm is added to the previous one. Yes. And the child is not having an opportunity to release. And in fact, what happens over time is a child learns that it does not have the opportunity to release mm -hmm. without encouraging more harm. violence or yeah. harm towards itself. And so it purposefully blocks yeah. the release of the harm yeah. from the past. In other words, it perf purposefully stops forgiveness mm -hmm. in order as a self-survival mechanism. Yeah. And not, not understanding, of course, that what that's going to mean is that there's going to be now a build up of emotion within itself mm -hmm. that is going to make the next intentional hurt that it receives harder, harder. to actually forgive. Yes, so it's the difference between a child, uh, between a parent um, slipping and slapping their child. The response in the parent, if that's unintentionally, is is likely not a hundred percent certain. When you say slipping and slapping the child, well, obviously they probably would have hurt the child some other way than slapping them. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, like they're swinging their arm and they hit the yeah, kid that's by what, that's, that's that's what, what I'm saying. I meant, yeah, you know. it has to be an accident. It's, it's an accident, like so-called accident. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is where, anyway. you know, obviously the parent's not aware of its personal space or does not value the child's personal space. And there yeah. might be another yeah. of other Or sins. is not thinking about what they're doing or the child Correct. moves suddenly or whatever. <laughs> yeah, which are all actually not accidents from God's perspective, but that's a different discussion. So is it intentional hurt? Well, it's intentional in the sense that the, per the parent hasn't released the you know, other reasons mm -hmm. why it created those things, which are due to a lack of personal space or lack of care of the personal space of the child and mm -hmm. so forth. So, so yes, it's partially intentional at least, isn't it? Yes, but it too, I was trying but let's to... Call it a, let's call it an accident for the sake of the argument. That you well, I was, <laughs> I was just trying to draw out an example that would highlight what you were saying about the on caregiver. The reception side, yeah. No, actually well, on, on the, the response side. of the caregiver side. So. Yeah. If I'm, do, I've seen this happen with parents where that where they're doing something else, something slips, their child is it's physically hurt. injured. Yeah. Very often, the caregiver's response because they weren't um, consciously trying to control or punish the child in that act, they feel like it's accidental, and they're and they very often immediately contrite. They're saying, "Are you okay? Are the you know, I'm sorry. The you give them a, a hug. Let them cry. Are you hurt. They validate the hurt. All of those things. Of course. So that so that allows a child to release the pain of the hurt. Yep. So the law's been broken, but it's accidental. It appears accidental on the bar for the child, and the obviously the action of the parent would demonstrate that there was no underlying intention other than an intention to avoid previous emotion. Yes. So, um, and so, so the child then feels like mummy, mummy or daddy didn't have an intention to hurt me. 
and that we can start to see that that would be much easier to release that hurt as opposed to a situation where a parent says, you are talking back to me, whack, I don't even want to hear anything about you get into your room. And then when the child starts to cry, it says, look, I'll yeah. give you another whack if you start crying about it. Yes, yeah, or that's <laughs> you it, that you, sort of uh, you get out of my face or yeah. whatever, something, a um, further withdrawal of love, Yes. which causes the child to sh oh, shut down everything. Yes. We can, I can see from that example that, the, that that intentional hurt, which was willfully saying, I'm going to hit my kid and hitting my kid, uh, the, the caregiver's response to my response to being hit is going to make it harder for me to release the emotions, which is probably impossible to release in that moment. In that moment, yeah. yeah. And you might release it in private, but it's unlikely, yeah. particularly if it's a recurring event. Yeah. So you'll probably store it and yeah. you probably store it for years. Mm -hmm. And most people store it their entire life. Mm -hmm. And after they pass, they start feeling about some of it. Yeah. Mm. And then obviously the pain that they have to feel is not just the pain from being hit. Mm -hmm. There's also the fact that um, the person who did this, in this case, the hitting, they wanted to restrict us or control us or manipulate us or punish us. They weren't trying so to So the pain of the restriction, the yes. pain of the control. The pain involved Which in that Which is another thing anyway. Yeah. God sees that as each one of these things are additional sins on the part of the parent. Okay. So the initial hit is a sin, but the desire to restrict the child's response to the hit is also a sin mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So, you know, from the parent's point of view, they're racking up sin after sin <laughs> yeah. after sin here quite, <laughs> but, quite rapidly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're talking here about the forgiveness side and yeah. why it's So difficult. the child, by the time yeah. the child gets to be an adult, uh, it's highly unlikely the child will release because it's receiving this constant threat about, threat about feeling its release. Yeah. And also releasing would require, remember the effect of release, as we discussed in other things previously, is that the parent would face up to its sin more, mm. would have to face up to its sin more, and most parents would get more violent about mm. that. Mm. So it's actually uh, initially in the childhood, in the, chi in the child now, it's a sort of a protective mechanism. Mm -hmm to stop the child from having more abuse mm -hmm. by, by not going through not the process feeling. of releasing and, and forgiving the parent. The problem now, though, is the child becomes an adult with all this stored up childish emotion. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, it probably will not choose to release as an adult due to fears that it has or other beliefs that it has. And then will probably act upon in its life with other people by harming other people, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Now, at what point is, you know, does the parent's responsibility cease and the child who is now an adult's responsibility begin? And that God measures very carefully through the intention mm -hmm. of the individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a child of like four, five, six, seven, doesn't know that it's developed an intention to stop feeling its own emotion. Mm -hmm. But a person who's 25 is certainly able to see that they have had an intention to stop feeling emotion. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere in between those two ages, you can see something must have happened where the child has grown into an adult now responsible, self-responsible, and any desire to suppress its own emotion now will have its consequences. Mm. And then if the child continues into its 30s, into its 40s, and this is why many people finish up having a bit of a breakdown emotionally in their 30s or 40s, because they have stored up a lot of childhood events emotionally and never released them. And now as an adult, they come face to face with them due to attractions that they then have to go through the release process. Now, most people do that unwillingly. And so what they do then is start taking antidepressants or drugs to suppress emotion. And then that exacerbates the problem. There's another choice the adult now is making to suppress emotion. Mm -hmm. And they can't really blame that on their parent anymore. Mm -hmm. That's their personal decision. Mm. Yeah. So you can see that it, the intention changes as you grow older as, as well in terms of what happens. And where does the liability begin? Well, that depends very much on where, what the source of the intention was. 
and, and where it came from. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the example you've given, the parent sma smacking a child and then also curtailing the child from being able to respond emotionally to the abuse, um, obviously is committing more than one sin at a time here. And obviously all of those sins will be attributed to the parent. They'll have a lot to repent for. Mm. But the child will also have a fair bit to forgive mm. because the child has not only been hurt in the original instance physically, but they weren't allowed to cry or deal with the hurt. And that's another hurt that they'll also have to then release emotionally. Mm. So obviously they'll have a, bit, a fair bit to forgive too. Mm. Mm. And so we're talking here about um, why intentional sin is often harder to forgive than unintentional sin. Mm -hmm. So basically you've listed... None of the, what we've listed... discussed is the reason why. No. <laughs> the reason why is because of what I stated originally. And that is there's a, always an impact upon the worth. And at some point you get to a point where you feel so badly about yourself that everything that happens to you is taken to be something wrong with you. Mm. And that's where it starts getting very hard to actually uh, forgive intentional sin because you feel like you're being picked on. You feel like you're being attacked. You feel like you're being singled out. And these kind of emotions usually trigger anger rather than, rather than a desire to forgive. And that's because of the inherent resistance to the level of pain of having our worth attacked, because that's quite during a, our childhood. During our childhood, yeah. Or the level of fear that we have associated with attack. With with acknowledging that we're being attacked, I can relate to that one. Yeah, not just with acknowledging being attacked, but the actual yeah. level of fear we have about attack, because most attacks are violent. Therefore, yeah. they had some physical pain associated with mm -hmm. them. And as a result of the physical pain, we naturally are going to be quite afraid of the next attack. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, there's, a, there's a physical violence, there's a physical response that we have that we're afraid of the physical pain, and then there's the emotional pain that we're afraid of and so forth, and all of these things start adding up over time. And when it was intentional, it feels like somebody's trying to do all that to us. And so that makes it much more difficult for us to forgive. Yeah, mm. yeah. And some of the other things we've listed in our notes here is that um, because the, with the intentional sin, it, it is the intention of, to harm us, to hurt us, that makes us feel that it's about us personally and our worths being affected. And well, then remember also, that can only be the case if we don't have established worth. Yes. So it's important to understand that every child does not have established worth. So therefore, they are going to go through those experiences if their worth is attacked. But once we become an adult and we go, and we, even once we become a one with God, we now have established worth. God's established our worth. Mm -hmm. Under those circumstances, we can be attacked for the rest of our existence and we still won't feel that it's anything to do with our fault. Yeah. And therefore, we'll have no personal emotional pain associated, even though we go through quite a lot of physical pain mm -hmm. through the attack. Mm -hmm. uh, we still... We don't feel emotionally pained by the attack. Mm. 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 So I'm still just trying to get clear on why the intentional sin against me is harder to forgive than the unintentional sin. So in whether I'm an adult or a child, we're saying it, it can be or it is more difficult. Are we saying no, yes I'm or saying, no? I'm saying it can be, not that it is. Yes. If we were at one with God, it would not be. Okay, so... Right? Yep. And the reason why it would not be is because our relationship with God establishes our worth and therefore we know that we're not getting attacked because of anything we have done. Gotcha. We're getting attacked because of the choices of the person, their choices, their, their evil choices are driving their attack of us, not anything within us that deserved it. Yes, so right. there's not this, in, this feeling of taking everything personally. Exactly. So, yep. so assuming that we're not in that state, mm -hmm. that God has defined our worth and we're and we are cognizant emotionally of that fact then our worth usually gets established through childhood events and the childhood events are such that every time that we are attacked and somebody has the intention to harm us mm -hmm. and then says it's all your fault that i did that mm -hmm. which is what most parents actually do you know when they smack their children and say it's your fault that i belted you it's your fault that i assaulted you it was something insufficient in you that caused me to do what I did to you. 
right? I'm punishing you now, but it's your fault that I'm doing it. Yes. That's the underlying, uh, you know, gotcha. attitude gotcha. of the parent. Yeah. Now the child, because it's had no pre pre disposition to knowing its worth from God, it now starts assuming its worth is what its parent is defining. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, it receives the emotions rather than rejects them. Mm -hmm. And so it begins to believe the parent's thoughts about mm -hmm. itself. And as a result of believing the parent's thoughts about itself, it now then is extra hurt mm. by each new event. So there's in fact, it feels like additional pain yes um and that's why it feels harder to forgive yes yeah so now it's not just bearing up under the physical pain which see a person who's a celestial spirit on earth might bear up under the physical pain under intense physical pain for long periods of time without feeling any sense of its own of their own worth being attacked mm -hmm. but a child is not does not have the state where it knows its own worth Mm. And so, therefore, it is learning its worth from its parent's treatment of itself. Yeah. So, so the parent is treating the child in a certain way, and that defines to the child its own worth. Mm -hmm. And now it sees, oh, mum and dad don't think very much of me. They think it's all my fault. They think it's all, you know, they're belting me because they think I deserve it. And all these kind of things start playing out inside of it, and that's all hurt. Yeah. Emotional hurt that now exists in the child that that the child obviously, usually if they're being abused in this way, they're not allowed to release any of it either. Yeah. You know, the parent refuses to allow the child to release it. So now the, ch the child who grows into an adult who has a huge amount of unreleased emotional hurt mm -hmm. about its worth. Mm -hmm. And now any new event that occurs that's intentional feels terrible. Because there's already the resonance there about their worth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, very good. Mm. Why is it that as adults, we can often perceive intentional harm against us and become almost defensive about a lot of things that are not intentionally harming us? Well, I think the previous example gives us the explanation of that question. Yeah. Basically, what we're saying is that because of this build-up of emotional emotion about our worth during our childhood, the way we've been treated as children is pretty bad for many people on the planet, and and this is a, an epidemic as well in, it, yeah. in its own right. Yeah. And and by the time the child becomes an adult, now it is hypersensitive to anything, any any uh, any event that happens, it's going to assume the source of the event wanted it to happen. Mm -hmm. And and this is where we start making presumptions that a person who accidentally hurt us didn't did, accidentally hurt us. They but did it on purpose. They did it on purpose. Or or we take things very personally well, or feel naturally. very defensive. Naturally um, we're going to take things very personally and be defensive because all through our life in our childhood it was personal. Yeah. So even though it wasn't personal for the person who's doing it now maybe mm -hmm although it's possible that it is given the law of attraction and how it works right yeah, yeah. but even if it wasn't um we would still think it is yes because of our childhood processes Experience. that we've already been through that's caused this condition to exist in our soul and we've never made the choice as an adult to release it mm -hmm. and uh, and so it remains it's interesting isn't it how often um as adults, we can have this very defensive state and feel people are out to get us and people are attacking our worth and simultaneously deny that we were attacked on issues of worth as a child. Yes. It's, it, yet the, the adult state is indicating that the childhood events occurred, but obviously because we're resistive mm. to the emotions, to the process of forgiveness, we're in denial about what happened in our childhood, mm -hmm. but then it affects us as adults. That's right. It's well, this is where psychological help can help us a lot yeah. because it can help us identify that if I'm having a certain response as an adult, then it probably means that something happened in my childhood to predispose me yeah. to, to feeling this way as an adult. Yeah. And, and, you know, this kind of psychological assistance can help us open up to the sin of our parents. Unfortunately, the majority of people, even psychologists, don't want to admit the sin of their own parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so unfortunately, very few people even take 
people through the sin of their parents. Yeah. There are some very good books that you can read about those particular subjects, aren't they? There's yeah. a, is it the Su Susan Ford stuff about, you know, parents and toxic parents, toxic parents and, and so forth. There's a lot of, there's a lot of psychologists there. nowadays who recognise that, wow, there's, there is a lot of very bad parenting going on yeah. and, and we need to be really truthful and honest about yeah. those particular things. But unfortunately, most people hate being truthful and honest about it because they want to chance, st they're still trying to earn a relationship with their parents. Yes. They don't want to give up the relationship with the, with, with these people who abuse them. Mm -hmm. And I call them people who abuse them because they're not really parents mm -hmm. you know, in any sense of the word. And also they're not the true, the true parent of their soul anyway. God is the true parent. And, and th these people have prevented them from having a relationship with God. So. You know, the reality is there's a lot that can be done to help a person to, to break through the barriers intellectually yeah. to, to realise that there's a lot of problems associated with their childhood. But to actually break through emotionally is much more difficult mm. because that requires going through forgiveness. And, and most people are very resistive to the emotions involved, the painful emotions that are involved yeah. without there being some level of commiseration or assistance or help externally. Yeah, mm. which actually prevents the process, as we've mentioned. Earlier. Fully, from fully occurring, yeah, yeah, as we've already mentioned. Yeah. But in the case of intentional sin, it's going to be harder to forgive uh, for, for any person who's lived on the planet um, who's not yet at one with God. It's going to be much harder to forgive. Mm -hmm. For any person who, is a, who becomes at one with God who's on the planet, it's just as easy to forgive as any other sin. Yeah. But, but um, for a person who's, a, who's grown up as a child on this planet, it's going to be quite difficult to forgive because... The, the usually it, it, it relates to events that have happened at a much younger age that have caused a predisposition to the suppression of those kind of worth-based emotions mm -hmm. that now ha are still occurring as an adult that they're, they're trying to still fight and resist. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank mm. you. Intentional sin is also harder to repent. Yes, well, it's a very hard <laughs> to repent. But, <laughs> So why is repentance far more difficult for me if I have a desire to sin than it is if I obey God's laws but I just make mistakes? Yes, yeah, so the desire. See, when I obey God's laws and just make mistakes, mm -hmm. oh, and, but I want to be a law-abiding person from God's perspective, then I've already got a bit of a desire to know what the laws are and to understand what the laws are and understand how those laws play out and, and see when I'm in disharmony with them and see the effects of my disharmony with them. So I've already got some level of self-awareness and desire to know what's going on. Yeah. But when my desire is just to sin, you know, to, to uh, I want to sin, I, I want the results of sin. Yeah. I am ultra selfish in that place. Yeah. All I'm concerned about is myself and my own so-called pleasure and happiness. That's mm -hmm. all, all that bothers me. And in that place, it is very, very hard to develop a desire to repent mm. because my actual desire is completely the opposite. It's yeah. a to sin. It's to get the results of my sin. Yeah. And, and so it's very, very difficult for a person who is, it has yet to recognize their desires or who has recognized their desires but still wants them yeah. to actually stop yeah. doing what they're doing without doing, you know, having to do a number of other things, which we'll talk about later with when it comes to sincerity and yeah. sincerity of repentance. But it's very, very difficult under those circumstances to generate within yourself a sincere desire mm -hmm. to actually be sorry for what you've done yeah. when you desperately want to do what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's crucial, isn't it? It's not just stopping the action, but it's ceasing having the desire because as we've spoken about at length already in the series, yeah. God's laws are assessing our intentions, exactly. our desires, our emotions. So even if we put a facade on things and try to control our behavior, we... We still haven't changed. Still, from God's the laws are still operating on <laughs> the a same. The same laws are still operating. <laughs> yes. Exactly the same way. Yeah. And even more to a larger extent because we now got a facade on. And yeah. That's another sin. <laughs> and because that's another sin, there's going to be more intense uh, occurrences occurring as a result. <laughs> yes. And we're certainly not going to enter a state of repentance while we're like that. No, not, not why we continue a desire to sin. 
we're, we're definitely not going to enter repentance. We can enter a state of knowing what the sin is, mm -hmm. which, which is helpful, but it's not, that's only the beginning of the progr yeah, <laughs> progress, process, obviously, yeah. that we need to make. So, yeah. you know, yeah, when you've got a desire to sin and you really believe that desire to sin is bringing you happiness, very, very hard to stop. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's ways to stop, but it's hard to stop. Yeah. And not that I feel commiseration for those people, by the way. No. I'm just saying that if you get to the point where you've developed within yourself desires to sin, there's already a lot of damage done to your soul. Mm. So I've already got this sort of selfish feeling. I've got mm -hmm. a desire to control, manipulate, yep. uh, do whatever, punish, do whatever it takes to other people in mm -hmm. order to get what I want. The I result don't care of what other people feel. Yeah. I only care what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. And that's the case when we intentionally sin, isn't it? Yeah. So, so stopping the sin is not only ceasing the behaviour, but dealing with all of those underlying desires and justifications. And including, so that, including the selfishness. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's already yeah. making it harder to repent, isn't of, it? Because there's more work involved. Of course. There's more than just, oh, I did something, and I feel badly. everything you give up, it feels like a major trauma because it just feels like, I should be able to have this. Yeah. You know, it's to... Uh, it, it, for the people involved in the process, it's very, very hard. But, but the reality is it's a necessary part of the process because yeah. otherwise they'll never recognise their own sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about yesterday, part of the repentance process is not just removing the causal desire and reasons why we're sinning. It's feeling the impact of our sin and obviously there's a bigger impact when we're intentionally sinning. There's more penalties upon us, there's more yeah. effects on others. So. That also adds to the process of difficulty of repenting, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. We've, got, we've sort of got to get to the stage, don't we, of no longer desiring to sin or giving up the desire to sin. Yeah. So when I desperately desire to sin and I only desire to sin and I don't want to give up the desire for sin, it's going to be impossible for me to repent, obviously, until mm. I give up the desire to sin. Mm. And, and that usually is a, is a time of surrender. You know, you surrender to the fact that you are sinning. And this is when most people who are, who, who are in the spirit world stop sinning more. Mm -hmm. see, see, before that time, whether you're on earth or in the spirit world, you continue to do more damage. You continue to sin more, you continue to do more damage, you continue to have more pain and suffering. But once you get to the point where you surrender and go, okay, yes, all this pain and suffering is coming from <laughs> my intention to sin mm -hmm. and my desire to sin, and I just need to surrender the fact, uh, to surrender my desire to sin, give it up. Now, from then on, you're at least stopping further sin, mm. <laughs> as well as you're able in the, in the condition. Yeah at least you're not any more engaging further damage to your soul from that point. And that's when the person in the spirit world enters the hells. Yeah. So before then, they usually are earthbound and they're doing more sins and more sins and more sins and more sins and more mm -hmm. sins, causing more and more and more and more damage, more and more and more damage as they go. And, and then they feel so much pain from it all because they, they're very sensitive to pain in the spirit world. They go, oh, I'm just going to give it up. Yeah. Because they're tired of it. Mm -hmm. the tide of the pain that it's causing. So you're ceasing the willful desire based, or the desire based part of your sin. That's right. You haven't necessarily removed the sin Not from yet. you. You haven't removed the sin yet, but at least you've, you've stopped acting upon the desire to do it. Yes. And, and that's going to be a major improvement because it's going to lead you to repentance at some point. And that's different from trying to create a facade, like ceasing it through facade-based facade. control. Which is another sin. Yeah. Yes, so no. they're, they're two different. So, so completely one, different. One is I s change my behaviour, the desire still exists within me, and but it, I, it's going to seep out anyway in different actions. It will, but but at least I'm uh, in the facade one. Yeah. Yeah, you change your behaviour, but in the end the underlying desire is remaining. In the second one, you say... I'm going to surrender this desire. Yeah. I, I'm going to no longer act upon this desire. And it's an emotional feeling. I, I, I am tired of it. I am exhausted yeah. by it. I am just tired of all the pain and suffering it's causing me and other people. I'm going to give the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. That's an emotional place now. 
So in both cases, the the causal reason and is still within you, but in one state, you're far closer to releasing that than in the other. And in the other, the other state, you, you've got another sin yeah. <laughs> that, that you have to repent of. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, obviously one leads you further away from repentance mm -hmm. and the other leads you to repentance. And the question here was, in, why, you, why is intentional sin harder to repent, to basically? Repent. Yeah. So the reason why it's harder to repent is because there is so much desire in me to sin mm -hmm. that I have not surrendered to, that I have yeah. not given up, that I have mm -hmm. not just got tired of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that is going to drive further behavior and therefore make it impossible harder. for me to repent yeah. while I have that attitude. Yeah. As soon as I give up that attitude, and submit or surrender, mm -hmm. now my possibility of repentance begins. So really there you're saying um, with intentional sin, correct me, but this is what I feel like you're saying, with intentional sin, when I'm in the throes of still having that desire, I feel righteous in that sin. And really you're saying the shift becomes possible, repentance starts to become possible and much more achievable as soon as I awaken to the sin within my intentional sin. It's not, it's not just awaken to the sin. Feel it most as of the time we are awake to it. Yeah, we know it's sin, but we, we don't feel badly about it. We don't it. feel bad about it. I'm saying making the transition emotionally between feeling good about it and feeling bad about it. That's what I thought you meant, yes. That's, that, that's the transition emotionally yeah. that has to happen. Then we can begin repentance. Mm. But if we don't make this transition emotionally between feeling good about sin and feeling bad about sin, we're never going to begin the process of repentance. Mm. It's just going to be impossible. Mm. 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 Yep. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you know, the other problem with this too is that you, you sort of, you can, in that state, so what I'm saying there is you, now in that state, you've given up your sinful action because you're just tired of it, you're, you're exhausted by it, mm -hmm. but you're yet to give up your sinful desires. Yeah, that's it. And you've still got to do that. Yes. At some point. You still, the work's still there. But it's more highly likely you're going to do it mm -hmm. because you've given up the sinful action. The, the, the will. Desire the desire to continue, to continue it. acting in it. You still have the desire for it, but you no longer feel like I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, it's like yeah. You've, internally there's still a soul-based condition that drives you to do it. Yeah. But every time you contemplate doing it, inside of yourself, you just go, oh, I'm tired of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <just> exhausted <laughs> doing that. I'm sick of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that feeling of sickness about it yeah. is what is going to help you get to the next stage. Yeah. obviously, of yeah. repentance. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I can, uh, like, I feel like you've answered that adequately. There's lots more I could uh, just sort of talk about with yeah, repentance, I, the process, because I can relate to a lot of what you're saying. Well, one other thing I'd like to mention about harder to repent is when we have a purposeful <laughs> desire for ignorance as well, there's a big effect on that. It's like, it's like that, that is a real big problem, in fact, mm. because you can see that that means that I'm never going to, I, I might feel tired and exhausted, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to recognize that it's because of my sin. Yes. Right? So I can, and this is what I was thinking about, I can exhaust myself in my sin while still wanting to remain unaware of the cause of the, of the exhaustion Correct. and of the sin. Correct. And I can relate to that in my own experience. And that's not going to have any effect either. Life is just crappy, <laughs> painful, blah, yeah. but I'm still in a state of really either wanting to just suppress or ignore the real cause or blame other people for it. Yeah. And that's a stuck place. That's a stagnant, unhappy place. Yeah, repentance can't occur from that place. It's, repentance is way harder than when I go, oh my goodness, I'm worn out. I keep seeing myself and taking I'm the worn same out action because of my sin. in sin. I keep seeing that sin, I keep acting in it, and it's exhausting me, and I feel yucky and painful. And I've, I'm, I've engaged a process with God there. And I'm worn I? out because of the sin, like yes. I said. Yes, I, I see I cause know, and effect. I, I know that it's the sin that's causing me to be worn out. <laughs> yes. So then the repentance is going to become easier. Every yes. step we're talking about here, Yes. Even though it relates to intentional sin, repentance is becoming easier, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But intentional sin is difficult because you've got to go through these states of ignorance. 
you've got to go through the state of total denial mm -hmm. and and then you go through the state of ignorance and then you go through the state that oh, I do want to mm -hmm. and you go through that state and there's all these different states you go through when you're giving up sin yeah. uh, you know that and so it's very very hard to repent from this intentional sin because you've got to go through more states yeah. to get to the actual causes of why you're sinning yes yeah so it's harder but it's very educational well it's very educational because it informs you about love and god's view of love immensely so it's a fantastic process i'm mm -hmm. not saying to, to don't do it yeah, in no, fact of course i'm saying not. quite yeah. the opposite you yeah. must do it yeah. you're, you're going to be forced to do it actually yeah. Yeah. but but it, it is going to be the more we sin the more difficult we make it for ourselves mm. and that's the sad thing is that people continue sin continue sin continue sin in feigned ignorance or in, in purposeful intention and, and not realising, and we'll talk about later about why, not realising the, the effects they're placing on their soul, which are this, this growing difficulties of being able to undo it mm. and, and how difficult it and hard it's going to be and how long the process is going to be and how painful the process mm. is going to be undoing each sin. Mm. The more you sin, the more difficult it becomes to undo each sin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's sort of, but unless you take sin seriously, I mean, by that I mean, unless you move from a place of just wanting to hold on to other people thinking you're a good person or um, doing well, things the world's We're discussing all way. that later though, aren't we? All, all the reasons why a person may not... Um, you know, a per reason why a person may not move into the to a process of repentance. We're discussing all those things later, okay, cool. aren't we? So I, I think we're better off just focusing on the answer on this case is the yep. reason why it's hard is yep. because of this. And cool. we can look at the more details about that later, Yes. And the more we talk about it later. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yep. yeah. Just when you're talking about giving up the intentional action of sin, I see a lot of people doing that so-called doing that but it's actually a facade and that actually is more detrimental yeah and that's yeah. one of the reasons why it's hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, it, because every time they try to put a facade around it they're sinning again yeah and and every time you add to your sin you're obviously making it harder for yourself totally <laughs> <laughs> and people don't realize you know we're at our groups in our second assistance group last year we we talked about the facade and you know the problems with the facade and People don't realise the seriousness of it, hey, it's like the sin of it. Mm. It's like a huge sin that we're committing because basically yeah. we're presenting a false image of ourselves to ourselves and the world yeah. and it's going mm. to have huge amounts of detrimental effects to our life if we don't undo that. Yeah. 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 No Absolutely. matter what the warts and all thing underneath is, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a lot better <laughs> than the terrible facade we've made yeah. that is the result of our sins Yeah. 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 and the sins of others often yeah. too. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've talked about uh, intentional sin making repentance more difficult. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about when repentance is actually impossible. Mm -hmm. So that's when I'm believing I'm right. Repentance becomes impossible. Yes. Yes. Isn't that interesting? So, so why is that? I mean, why is believing I'm right make right as believing I'm right make repentance impossible? Well, it's pretty logical when you think about it. If you believe you're doing something right when it's actually wrong, you're never going to see it's wrong. <laughs> and you have to see it's wrong. In and order you have to, to see it's repenting. wrong before you start repenting. Yeah. You have to see the sin before you will repent for the sin. And if you can't see the sin, then you'll never repent for it. And, and this is the problem that the majority of people have after they pass. There's a whole heap of things on earth that are considered normal. Mm -hmm. normal behavior normal response normal way of treating your child normal way of treating your husband or your wife normal way of interacting in society normal ways of uh, living in the world normal ways of working and normal ways of all these different things that we have right mm -hmm. that are all sins mm. from god's perspective mm. so every time we think it's normal and we think we were right doing it it's going to prevent us from repenting for what god knows is wrong mm. And, and you can see how difficult that is, is going to be. It's more difficult than anything else we've discussed already about intentional sin. Yeah. Because when you believe you're right to do it, yeah. 
you are actually doing it motivated by a feeling inside of yourself that you're right and good doing it. Yes. So, so these kind of things are, are things like, it's right to, to just lie to somebody if, if, if it's going to help their worth. Mm. You know, it's, it's right to um, withhold the truth from people if it's going to hurt them. Yeah. Now, these are all things that people on earth think are right. Yeah. They are very, very hard sins to give up. Yeah. Because you already believe they're right. Yeah. And if you continue to believe they're right, you're never going to see them as a sin. And if you don't see it as a sin, you're never going to repent. And if you never repent, you will always stay in the same condition. Yeah. So that's the reason why these kind of things are very, very difficult. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about the idea that accidental sin should be easier to forgive. Mm. So should accidental sin be easier to forgive or not? Well, it should be. You know, if a person was cognizant of the intentions of the other individual who harmed them, if they know that the person didn't do it on purpose, mm -hmm. then you would think that it would, should be easier for, the per for you to forgive it. And that's because, as you've spoken about previously, there wouldn't be the aspect of, my per of it being a personal attack upon my worth Mm. inherent in the unloving action. And you can see a lot of that depends on my belief. If I believe you weren't, you di weren't, didn't do it intentionally, mm -hmm. that's different than if I believe you did it intentionally. Yes. Whether your intentions were intentional or not. <laughs> <laughs> is there too many intentions? In there, there? <laughs> there is. Whether it's the truth or not. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, you know, most often we're not that sensitive to the intentions of others until we become more sensitive emotionally. And the more detuned we are emotionally, the less in tune we are to the true intentions of an individual. Mm. But assuming that we can feel the intentions of the individual and we can feel that those intentions of the individual weren't to harm us in any way, there was an accident. Remember, mm -hmm. we've already defined accidents. We, yeah, yeah. People can refer to that. Or there was a mistake, and that's yeah. obviously going to be even easier for us to yeah. to to do something about. And um, then it would make sense, wouldn't it, that it should be should be easy. easier to forgive, to forgive the person who engaged that behaviour that harmed us. Mm. Mm. But you it, can see it very much depends upon my personal emotional interpretation mm -hmm. of the event, and this is our problem is that frequently our personal emotional interpretation is distorted from our childhood and therefore we cannot properly read the intentions of people. Mm, so, so, go on. well, let's move on to the next question because it's sure. specifically about that. Well, I was giving you an example of not reading the intentions okay, of the person, sure. maybe. An yeah. uh, example might be um, a person just prizes us with a little bit of correction in order to help us and we think they're attacking us. Yeah. There's an example of our emotional condition yeah. interpreting just a little bit of information as yes. an attack. Yes. And that, that obviously is due to predispositions that occur in yeah. my soul that now change the way I'm reading intention. Mm. Mm. But, the, but in that case, that in that example, there's not even a sin that's occurring. It's not even an accidental sin, is it? It's no, just, there's no sin at all, but yeah. I'm interpreting Inter there being, yes. being one. So the, pre, the precondition, the predisposition that exists due to past emotions that I've suppressed. And not released. And not released will affect the interpretation of current events. Correct. Yes. Yes. So obviously under those circumstances, it may be, mm -hmm. even though it should be easier to release mm -hmm. an unintentional sin, mm -hmm. it may not be because yep. of the interpretations I'm placing upon it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Let's move on to accidental sin. The fact that accidental sin is not easily forgiven. Not, not often not. Often yeah, not often easily not, forgiven. Yeah. Even though in the previous we spoke about how it should, it should be. be, it's not easily. No. So why is accidental sin often not easy to forgive? Um, and Well, as we've mentioned yeah. already when we, with the previous example we gave, um, Accidental sin, our interpretation of accidental sin emotionally, our emotional interpretation of the accidental sin is, is that we may interpret it as intentional. 
and we may interpret it as sin when it wasn't even sin. <laughs> mm. So, so the reality is that our our prior emotional condition effects, which 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 is determined by all the things we have not forgiven in the past and have not repented for in the past, mm -hmm. will have an effect on my interpretation of the current sin mm. and therefore affect how I react to that current sin. Yeah. And so I might react as if it was intentional yeah. when it wasn't. Yeah. And I may even react as if it was intentional when there wasn't even a sin at all yeah. because of my prior emotional experience. Mm. Mm. Okay, so let's look at some other reasons why it might occur. Yep. There can be the case, can't there, where um, the, somebody accidentally sins, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of addiction that's exposed in the person that they sin against in the process of that accidental sin. Yes. That causes then the person who's been sinned against to have an, a huge, huge reaction. reaction. Exactly. Feel like they can't forgive the other person for what they've done because they've challenged so many addictions. And in fact, for the person to forgive the sin against them, they would have to deal with all of their expectations and demands within the situation that we're challenged. They'd have to repent. Yeah. <laughs> because addictions and demands are inside of the person yeah. who's thinking they're needing to forgive, but yeah. but they have to repent for them. Yeah. So so it, it, it might be best if we give an example of this kind yeah. of thing. This happens a lot so. in relationships, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a, yeah. a big thing that happens in relationships where, you know, hubby, hubby, you know, he comes home work, from work late because he had a beer with the mates in the pub. Yep. It, he doesn't do it regularly. He just decided to do it tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. Wife interprets that as that she don't, he doesn't care for her anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and because that triggers a lack of care in her childhood that yeah. she's not released and not forgiven, mm -hmm. she then starts abusing hubby and yelling and screaming at him and telling him that he's what mm -hmm. for or whatever which demonstrates her addiction or demand that he be there whenever she demands. Yeah. Which actually demonstrates her sin. Yes. Rather than his. Yes. Right. So in that example, really, I mean, that's an intentional sin on his part, isn't it? No, While... not on his. It's an intentional sin on hers. Yes. There's no sin on his. Because he's, he's not really... Um, he's not trying to make a feel Broken his bad. word or done no, anything. He, he's he just, just, he's not just said anything, decided. maybe. Yeah. He just decided he's going to stay back for an yeah. hour with the guys, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and there's no... Like, he, he, he hasn't purposely tried to harm mm. her or hurt her. He's not, mm. he's, not, he's not even committing a sin. He's allowed to make a decision yes. of his own, aside from perhaps drinking the alcohol. Yeah. Let's assume it's not alcohol and yeah. it's, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know... I don't know, <laughs> non-alcoholic beer or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, he's not sinning at all. He, mm. he, he's just having a bit, a bit of time with his mates and, have, and developing some friendships, which he's allowed to do. There's no, in fact, God, God feels that's a great thing. So, so the fact that he's doing that and she's interpreting it as a sin yep. is a result of her condition of demands and expectations, which are all sins of her own. Mm. So, so she's interpreting somebody else's sin, which is not a sin, mm. because she has not repented for her sins. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's quite a it's quite a damaging place to do that in a relationship. It's very common, isn't very it? Very common. Yeah. And often occurs, but but it's also very very damaging. Yes. Um, to believe somebody else has sinned when you're the one sinning. Yes. Mm. Yes. So again, we're, we're not really talking about accidental sin there, are we? No. Well, um, this, what, what I'm saying, though, is that she's interpreting it as a, as a purposeful sin mm -hmm. and it wasn't even an accidental sin. Yes. It was just he, he made a choice, a decision that he was allowed to make and God, God approves of. Mm. Uh, he was allowed to make that choice and decision and God approves of it. There's no sin at all even there. Mm -hmm. 
but even if she did interpret it as an accidental sin where she just he didn't just inform her or whatever but why does he need to inform her well that's another discussion but <laughs> but but let's say it's let's true. say he forgot that he had made a previous arrangement yeah. well now it might be more of an accidental sin yeah but her reaction is far worse yeah. Her reaction is a, is a purposeful, intentional sin mm -hmm. to feed her own addictions. Mm -hmm. Far, far worse than anything yeah. he's done. Yeah. 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 And, and, and she's going to think then that forgiving him is going to be very hard. Mm. When really what she needs to do is repent for her own behavior. That's what she's finding hard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Another example we had here in our notes yep. is that when there's needy, say I'm a parent and I've got all this neediness and codependence with my kids. Mm. Good example, huh? Yes. So then all that neediness and codependence that I have basically creates a series of events that actually end up in an accident where my child loses their life. Mm. So that could be they got running across the road to get a ball and they get hit by a car, something yeah. like that. So, Or even worse, driving home to please mummy and daddy. <laughs> and and yeah. driving too fast and as a result and, and getting an accident. Having an accident. Yeah. yeah. So the parents involved in these kinds of accidents, they've participated greatly in mm -hmm. the sinful soul condition that actually creates the events yes they have and then often they're very heavily resentful say of the person who hit the child in the car or, or whatever yes um because the child's no longer meeting their addictions again, yes say, so again, similar to the previous example it's so so really what it sounds like you're saying is that accidental sin becomes harder to forgive when the sin exposes our own sin when the, yes, when the sin exposes things I need to repent for. Yes. Because remember, repentance is a harder process. Yes. And because it's a harder process, we have stronger resistance to it and more rage and anger associated with it. Yes. So any time our repentance is required through somebody else's, it tr is triggered by an accident. Yes. We're going to find it extremely difficult to forgive the person, yeah. whether it was intentional or not on the yeah. part of the person. Yeah. We're going to find it extremely difficult to forgive. Yes. Because of our interpretation of the event. Yeah. Not because of what the original intention of the person was who created the event. Yeah. Got mm. you. Mm. Got you. No, that's interesting. Mm. To be honest, because we've just now been talking there's a series of questions like why do I find it harder to repent in this circumstance and harder to forgive in that circumstance and easier and harder and all yeah, this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Honestly, all I can think about is the fact that my personal forgiveness and repentance, whether it's been intentional sin against me or unintentional sin against me, depends upon, the primary thing it depends upon is my personal level of humility. Yes, and of course. So, mm. so to me, when I feel about my need to repent about certain things or my need to forgive certain things, the biggest thing I find the hardest is just my willingness to be humble to the pain involved in, in each way. So what am I skipping over it's, there? It's I mean, not just humble to the pain. There's a lot of other factors which we talk about later as well. But, you know, there's issues of truth, there's issues of faith, there's issues of, of humility. Yeah. That cause us to, to be resistive to forgiveness and repentance. Or to find it easier or harder. Sorry, to find it easier to forgive or harder to forgive depending on the levels of those things within yeah ourselves. and because uh, each individual thing we have to forgive or repent for is different to us it, it has a different uh, value to us a different right. emotional value to us some things we will find easier to forgive than others yeah and some things we're going to find much harder to repent for from others as a result of the emotional signature that it's attached to it and the intensity of the emotion and the and how large the emotion is itself you mm. know and how much of it we have, how long it has been, you know. Yeah. And, and there's a many other factors, how much we've distanced ourselves from it as well has a large impact. Mm. So there are many factors that play into this process of forgiveness and repentance. But here we're sp discussing s specifically this, this concept of uh, why is it sometimes difficult when something was unintentional to forgive, to forgive and that's a lot, again, to do with our interpretation of events. 
Mm-hmm. And, and this is why we need to examine, see a, per, a person who's truly self-aware sees, maybe I'm being unfair here. Yeah, yeah. May, maybe, maybe my expectations are being too high here. Mm-hmm. Maybe I have some addictions of my own gotcha. <laughs> that yes. are causing me to react the way I'm reacting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the person who's self-reflective does that. Yeah. And therefore is able to forgive easily. But a person who's not self-reflective and particularly due to a lack of repentance because the, the le- part, if, yeah. if we have not repented for past behavior we are going to be especially insensitive mm-hmm. to any self-reflection mm-hmm. a- as a result of that we're going to find every single thing that's ever happened to us a major affront to our, <laughs> <laughs> to us and and we're going to react violently and angrily and then we're going to have all sorts of terrible reactions as a result not understanding that all of these reactions are basically because we just lack that self-reflective humility. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay. So humility Thank does you. play a large part, but also it's the things like love of truth as well, love of God's laws, love of God, desire for relationships, and then many other factors play a part in causing us to want to, to actually forgive and repent. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, let's move on. Mm-hmm. So now I'd like to talk to you about the resistance to repenting. So repenting now, not Mm -hmm. forgiving. Mm -hmm. So when I've been engaged in accidental sin, what what it tells me about me if I'm resisting repenting for accidental sin? Yes. So here we're talking about like accidental sin, human definition, which is very, very different than accidental sin, God's definition. Yes. And if we're talking about accidental sin, God's definition, then the first part of that that we mentioned before was if people had a soul condition that was sinful, that caused the accident. Yep. Versus just doing something because you're learning something. Yes. Very different. So how people. would you like to answer this question? In the... in. Because I've got questions and things well, to come with you one, in both cases. Yeah, well, either one. So this is about measuring your own intention a lot, isn't it? So, so for example, if I if I'm if I have to repent for things, I've got to first measure my own intention, right? Because mm-hmm. this is what God's laws are doing: measuring my intention. Yeah. Now, if my intention was to to do a loving thing to help somebody, and I just didn't know that it, it would turn out as bad as it did. Mm-hmm. Right, then, then, do I have as much to repent for? Because that's that's a mistake, is it not? And and can I just not admit the mistake and move on? Right. That's right. But what about this situation where I've seen people talk to you in seminars? Mm-hmm. Or oh, do, sorry, do you want to complete that? Yeah, I do, because it's the second half. Right. The second half of it was when the soul condition of everybody is such that they've had years and years and years of sinning and they've been shown and exposed that sin many, many, many times and then we've gone ahead and continue to sin more and more and more and more. Can you see that repenting for that is going to be very hard to admit to? Because we've already had years and years of exposure that we never repented for. And we've had years of events that have occurred over and over again that we've just ignored. It's going to be so hard for us now Mm -hmm. to admit that we had a part to play in the so-called accidental sin that yeah. was, had occurred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's a difference between, again, those two parts, you know, God's view of those two parts, and then what our response would be. If, if I truly believed it was just a mistake and I did my best and I tried my hardest and I, 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 I was as loving as I knew how to be. Aren't you saying there's nothing to repent for then? No, well, there may be, I may have still harmed somebody, but yeah. I, would, I, I would just say, I harmed you, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Yes. Wouldn't you? Yeah. And that'd be the end of it. You wouldn't feel guilt, you wouldn't feel shame, you wouldn't feel terrible, yeah. because God's laws haven't made you feel any of those things. And, and if the, they said, oh, I don't want a relationship with anyone, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you'd feel bad about that, but you might feel a bit bad about that, but you won't feel like you're to blame for that. Yeah. You'll feel like they are, because they're mm. just not forgiving you for something you didn't even intend to do. Yeah. Right. So that is relatively easy to repent for, obviously. Yes. Be- because it's just a single mistake that, from God's perspective, there's hardly anything to repent for except just the results of it. Mm-hmm. Right. And your your desire to do a loving thing would mean that you're more connected to any pain that you could Correct. create it so as you a result. Would, so you would go, 
wow, I didn't know it was going to hurt you. I'm sorry. I, I, and I now, grieve that. Now that I know yeah. that, I'll never do that yeah. again yeah. or do yeah. it that way again, you know? Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's what you would do, naturally. And and so that would be pretty easy to repent for. Yes. Right? But the other type of accident <laughs> where you've got a build-up of soul-based sin over years and years and years that have been exposed many, many times before and you've denied it and you've suppressed it and you've pushed it back down and that all have things that you've not forgiven for as a result underneath of them, mm -hmm. that's going to be very hard for you now to go, I repent, <laughs> you know, and go through the process of repenting emotionally. Yes. Yeah. So what about um, uh, this? It's uh, somewhere in the middle of those two mm -hmm. where I've seen people um, in seminars raise their ha hand and ask questions about this and feel quite indignant about it, to be honest, mm -hmm. where they feel that. So they're not years and years and years young. They're 20 or they ha they're recalling a time when they're 20 or 16 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they can see now that they they took an action that they thought was neutral, neither good for the world or, or bad for the world. Like I married a man in codependence, for example. Uh, I left home and I married a guy. Yeah, but did they know it was in codependence? Is, is no. that what you're saying? It's, if I, let me finish here. Are you saying they know it was in codependence? No, I'm, I'm, I'm or saying... Or they just married a man and they didn't know it was in codependence? I'm saying that they are saying to you... Now? No, they're saying to you that at that time they had no idea that they were acting in harmony with sin, basically, that they didn't know they were being codependent with the person. However. Well, well yeah, see, see, I would argue with that even. Yes. But anyway, continue. Well, no, that's really what <laughs> well, I wanted well, see, to raise with you. a lot of times we you. do know we're being The difference is, <laughs> yeah. So the difference between allowing ourselves to consciously have a thought pattern about it. Mm -hmm. And willfully remaining ignorant about and it. And willfully, and the difference between that and actually having a soul-based awareness, like, but wanting to willfully suppress that and mm. calling it accidental sin. Mm. So, um, but we, I feel that we've defined accidental sin quite well in our definitions in the past, and we've decide, defined uh, intentional sin quite well now mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the definitions. And we've got the two definitions of accidental sin, and it certainly doesn't fit into the second one, where you just went ahead and did something out of a pure loving desire yes because there is a whole lot of un impure unloving desires that usually drive you to marry someone in codependence <laughs> that's right i was just trying to highlight that because the two examples you gave was one was extreme of like i just want to do wonderful things for the world and the other one was like it's years and years and years and years and years, and years down the track and you, you well, know, well it, I, I feel it applies to the second one where it's years and years down the track and you're in codependence and you've got a whole yep. heap of emotions and i feel that example you're giving does apply to the second instance uh, rather than the first. So do I. I was just trying to highlight that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't feel it's in between. And <laughs> okay. God doesn't either. Yes. By the way. Yes. God sees it as, no, that is what the, that is this first type of accident, which is not an accident at all, yeah. but actually the subsequent result of many, many years of suppression of yes. emotion yes. and suppression of repentance and forgiveness. Yes. Got you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, by the time we're 16, we're years and years down the track. Uh, usually, usually between the age, when you say years and years, you know, you're usually seven or eight years down the track of having a degree of independence, of learning how to manipulate the system, uh, which we learnt during our childhood. Many times we now have some pretty unloving emotions by the time we're a teenager mm -hmm. and, uh, and oftentimes are acting upon them. And in fact, uh, usually also acting in rebellion mm -hmm. against law and so forth for a lot of different reasons. And yes, by the time we're 16, uh, usually by the time we're seven, we're well entrenched in sin, mm -hmm. to be frank. That's intentional, not accidental. We're well intentional in, in intentional sin by then, yes. Mm -hmm. but, but because we're seven and we have still development, developmentally, sexual and uh, intellectual development to occur, God doesn't attribute it all to us at that time, obviously. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but by the time we're 16, 17, 18, 19, now there's a much higher likelihood that, that our choices are going to be attributed directly to us. Mm. Yeah. So that is not accidental sin? No. 
So here we want to talk about the resistance to repenting for accidental sin and what that tells me about me. Yes. So why would I so be... So that's why I defined firstly what accidental sin was. Yeah. Here right. we're talking about the, kind, the, the resistance to repenting to anything that, that is defined as either just a mistake yep. from God's perspective yep. or defined as something that, that has occurred over years and years and years, but we want to call it an accident. Oh, okay. So we're including both. We'll include both. Okay, good. You know, just for All the right. sake of the argument. Okay, good. We'll include both. Yeah. In the first case, as I've already stated, it should be pretty easy to repent for it. Yes. Because we're, we're, our intention was good in the first place. And remains good. And remains good. So yep. when we notice we hurt somebody, we go, oh, I'm sorry. It's terrible we've hurt. What can I do to fix it? You'd even yes. want to fix it, wouldn't you? Yes. But you wouldn't feel this constant pain of penalty about it. Right. Because you know you're doing the right thing. You, tr you tried to do the right thing. You, did the r you tried to do the right thing with the right intention. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you wouldn't feel this constant guilt or pain that, you know, the person still treats you badly as a result of it because you know your intention was right. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because often um, you've had to pull me up on that where you've said, hang on, you're giving yourself a really hard time when you had a good intention here and you tried to do the yeah, right thing. Yeah, but you're only giving yourself a hard time because of previous hurts, previous things you haven't forgiven. Yes. Or previous ways you've been treated that you haven't repented, you've treated yeah. others that you haven't repented for yeah. that are now applying to this particular example. Yes, so that's about forgiveness. And that's yeah. about forgiveness yeah. of the past, you see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying no, let's say there's nothing to forgive in the past and yes, all I've done is I had a good intention, a learning, yeah. a learning situation and I've gone ahead and tried my best but it failed and it failed, like, might have failed really badly, you know, because of something I couldn't foresee. Mm -hmm. It was an accident. I, from God's perspective, that's not a very big sin. I've only just broken the law. Uh, the law, whatever the law was, there'll be a consequence of that. And, I, and, if, and if I own up to it immediately and go, yeah, well, I, you know, it's terrible, I did that. And quite often we feel quite bad in that place because we are sincere. Yeah. So, so we feel quite bad, we let, us, uh, we let it go emotionally, you know, mm -hmm. have a cry about even what, yeah. what happened to the person or whatever, yeah. let it go emotionally, it's all done and dusted. Yeah. Even if that person never forgives us, it's yeah. still done and dusted from yeah. God's perspective. Yeah. And that should be relatively easy to repent. Yes. But the other types, as I've mm -hmm. mentioned, anything related to the continual thing that's been done over years and years and years that I've resisted and resisted and resisted, anything related to that is going to be very, very difficult. So I've given some examples here when, so when we believe we'll be punished as if we, as if it was deemed, in, if it was in deemed intentional by others. So in other words, I do an accidental thing that I didn't intend, but I'm worried that they are going to think I did intend it. Yeah. And I think if, if I own up to the truth, yeah. they'll punish me yeah. as if I did intend it. Yeah. Now that's a sin on my part now. Yeah, because I'm refusing to acknowledge the truth. I'm refusing to acknowledge the truth. And I'm refusing to let go of past emotion that has caused me to believe that I need to not, I, I can get away with not acknowledging truth. Yeah. They are sins that I need to repent for. And because of that, it's going to be much harder for me now mm. to repent for this particular accident. Mm. Because I've got playing, playing a heap of past things I haven't repented for mm. involved in the process. Yeah. So it's like, uh, let's say I'm a drug taker and, uh, or a drug uh, distributor, and all of a sudden I realise how bad it is. I've gone through this process. I cry, I cry, you know, and I go through the process. I realise how bad it is. I decide I'm going to confess to the police. And then all of a sudden I realise my family is still doing it. And if I confess and they ask me for details, I've got to tell them about my family. Mm. They're going to then maybe go for my family because they're still in it. Mm. And that's going to get me in deep trouble. Now, there's a sin. I'm committing that one. Yes. So even though I'm say I'm confessing for the thing that I before, I'm also now resisting repentance for the fact that I'm not acknowledging that I still should tell the truth no matter what the results. Yes. yes. Uh, it's the same kind of example. Yes. Got you. Yeah. All right. Your next example was um, wanting to say, like, I didn't know any better. Mm. Which is really about wanting, so even if we didn't know any better or we were avoiding the knowledge of how we could do better at the time, mm -hmm. 
God still wants us to learn the lessons of personal responsibility. He does, yeah. So by avoiding repentance about a sin that we did engage, even though we might not have consciously known any better, we're basically avoiding the lesson of personal responsibility. Is that correct? Yeah, or? well, there's a number of things we're avoiding, I think, in that, mm -hmm. pla in that place. Firstly, mm -hmm. sure, you may not have known, right? Yep. But pleading that you didn't know to be a mitigating factor yes. in the harm that was done to another yes. is not really recognising a sin. He's kind of saying, oh, it did hurt someone else, but you shouldn't, I shouldn't have to feel about that because, oh, I don't know. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Is that a person who's truly repentant? If you really care about the other person, you care that they were hurt, whether you meant it or not. Correct. So there's a demonstration of a lack of repentance. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. quite clear it is. because I'm pleading, I didn't know, I'm pleading ignorance as if it should be a mitigating circumstance on the pain that I've caused. Yeah. And, and, and a person who's truly sorry for what they've done, and, and if I did it with the right intention, I wouldn't be pleading that. I'd be going, oh, it's terrible I've caused that. I'll try to fix it. Yes. I'll try to recover the problem yeah. and help the person that I've harmed. I wouldn't be going, oh, I didn't know, so I'm not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yep, very mm. good. Um, not wanting to see the prior sinful conditions that, that created the so-called accident. Yeah, so we've talked about this a bit already. And, yes. and, and this is where I'm going, okay, yes, I, like there might have been a so-called accident now, right? But, but the reality is there's been 25 times before in my life that this emotion has been exposed. It's highly unlikely when it comes to this particular so-called accident that I'll be very sorry Repented. for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> given the fact that I've avoided every other experience yes. of repentance for all the other emotions that have led to it. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. And finally, this one's interesting. Being prevented by insurance companies and other institutions that do not want us to admit the mistake. So what... Yes, yeah, so this is that? where we value certain relationships, right? Where, whether it be a business relationship or a personal relationship that says, if I admit to a mistake, then I'm going to get in trouble in that relationship. Mm. Right? So the trouble with admitting a mistake with insurance companies, many insurance companies won't insure you anymore. Yeah. Right. Now, now that's pretty bad, actually. And that encourages you to not be repentant, yeah. actually. Yeah. So if you were truly, if you were truly loving you would never do what that company asked you to do and you probably wouldn't even use them in an insurance company anymore yeah, either yeah. if they asked you to do that yeah. and yet almost in every single uh, agreement insurance agreement there is this underlying thing not to say anything mm. if you've caused the accident yeah i can't agree with it and yeah. it's definitely wrong yeah and uh, and it's wrong morally, obviously, and but it's also going to prevent you from being fully repentant for what you've done. Because being fully repentant is the willingness and the desire to expose the full truth of what's occurred. Exactly, and if you're and to afraid make, to make remediation or to make and to make repair uh, remediation. Yeah. 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 Now, if you're afraid of a relationship breaking, yes. If you do that and you value that relationship more than you value truth and mm -hmm. more than you value repentance and more than you value God's relationship with God, yeah. you're going to end up with no relationship with God and you're going to also end up struggling with repentance. Yeah. Mm. So this is a good example of yes, how we often value relationships over God's truth or God's love. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of other things we could mention there, but, yeah. you know, that, that just gives some examples of, of what, why, uh, what this resistance to repentance is telling me, you know, what, what, what it shows me is the problem with me. You know? Yes. <laughs> so it's showing me all my flaws when it comes to ethics and morality, really, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And God, of course, is trying to correct flaws regarding ethics and morality. Yes. So if we engage the process, it's very good. Mm -hmm. We could actually learn a lot about ourselves mm. and a lot that we need to correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay.